Now, there are a couple of things that we need to mention or talk about or whatever along the way here. Editorially, uh, there has been a little sniping at 68 caliber in terms of reviews. Uh, the oft-quoted statement is something along the lines of we actually use the product that we review unlike some other sites. Well, I'm here to tell you that this particular kind of paintball gun I played with from 1983 through 1991. Now, my particular pump gun towards the end there was a Lapco Grey Ghost, but along the way I used McMurray and Son Annihilators, Tazo Vindicators, Line SI Bushmasters, Carter Termites, Carter Comps, and the CCI Phantom, as well as a whole mess of other uh, off-brand and uh, no-name no pump guns. And there are a few little things that those of us who started playing way back then and uh, have used this kind of paintball gun and have gotten very familiar with them, there are a few little tricks and things that we know. Dog. There are a few little tricks and things that we know that a lot of players who are only familiar with semi-autos, and in particular electronic semi-autos, that uh, they may not know. One of the virtues of the pump gun is, well, you cannot... One of the virtues of the pump gun is that you can self-regulate the velocity of your shot once you're on the field by the manner in which you use your 12 grams. So, for example, if you've got somebody hiding behind a berm 15, 20 feet away, and you need to arc a shot in on them, bloop a shot just over that little hill or bump in the ground that they're hiding behind, you shoot down your 12 gram until there's hardly any uh, pressure left at all, and you can uh, bloop shots in on them. You need an extra foot or two of range, little bit of more velocity to uh, cut a hole through a bush to your opponent. You use the first five shots of a 12 gram and then change it out. Two things happen. One, pressure is the highest on the first few shots. And two, dumping a 12 gram and quickly reloading another one kind of tends to chill your valve a little bit, uh, which introduces a little bit more CO2 into the valve chamber and that raises your velocity. This is a trick of the uh, old pros, uh, something that uh, all of us have used to great effect over the years. Another nifty little aspect of the pump gun is that it is all mechanical, which means if things go bad out in the field, unless they're absolutely, totally catastrophic, such as a broken valve tube, you can keep on playing because you can field strip the gun fix the problem or temporarily fix the problem and get right back into the game. Your uh, rate of fire may be reduced, your accuracy may be reduced, but you're not standing there holding a completely impotent piece of metal that can't do anything. And that brings us to field stripping of the Phantom. Um, first thing you should have is familiarity with the gun's manual. <clears throat> we need a uh, 7 16th crescent wrench for the hard line and a set of uh, Allen wrenches, my uh, trusty dusty, uh, so rusty that nobody is interested in ripping it off. It's the only reason why I've managed to hang on to this one. Okay, um, you can pretty much disassemble this gun in um, a variety of different orders, but uh, probably the uh, most effective way to go about doing it is to remove the grip frame, which gives you uh, access to the pump handle. You can then remove the pump handle. Um, this 
when the grip frame is removed, the valve assembly will slide out the back. Uh, you can leave the hard line intact or disassemble it at that point if you need to, but you can get to the uh, valve tube, the cup seal, uh, etc. Um, with just removing th these two screws. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that these are field strip screws. They're knurled for an easy grip. Um, there's a spring in here, so you may get a little jump back uh, when you take off this rear screw. Um, so expect it. With the hard line in place, you're not going to get a lot of that. If you had a different configuration, it might sometimes tend to pop out the rear. So it's a good idea to hold it in place when you're removing that rear screw. Um, the front screw is usually a lot tighter. I've previously loosened it. Um, and uh, you need to make sure that it's tight because it will affect the operation of the gun uh, if it's not. But you don't want it overly tight because if, it, if it's overly tight, you won't be able to strip it in the field. Um, we've just separated this gun into two major components. This is the uh, grip frame with the valve assembly. This is the uh, power tube. The gears comes from the valve through that to fire the ball. This is the uh, valve seat. Um, and behind it is the uh, cup seal and the valve spring. And you can see that this has a little bit of give on it because of the uh, valve spring. Uh, this little slot here is what the pump arm rides in, keeps everything aligned, and uh, the well, the deeper well, right here is where your sear uh, trips against the hammer sear. This is the hammer and the hammer sear. You can see it'll slide right out the back. The phantom hammer uh, was unique when it was originally developed because of this uh, mating collar to slide inside the bolt and the well that the spring rode in to keep everything aligned. Uh, early pump gun design uh, didn't have an arrangement like this and sometimes this mainspring would kink. Um, the more support you give it, uh, the more in line it is the more consistent your uh, performance you'll get out of that spring until it's too worn to be doing the job that it's supposed to be doing. Um, sear is fairly simple. It's got a uh, spring underneath here that uh, allows this to rock. That little forward portion that rises up there, that has a little hook on it that grabs a hold of the lip of the bolt so that when the gun is cocked the spring is compressed between the bolt and the hammer and when you pull the trigger it pushes on this little rear portion raises the hook releases the two and the bolt is able to fly back it impacts this shoulder on the cups on the uh, valve tube which pushes the valve tube back, opens up the valve, releases gears to flow down the barrel 